I've worked there since 2011, so my main job has been uh, implementing and developing the stereotactic radiotherapy program uh, there. Before, before 2011, we treated no stereotactic radiotherapy, so all of our uh, et Saber and SRS is currently delivered uh, with the CyberKnife VSI. Uh, whenever ask, anyone asks me this question, I always say the same thing, which is um, my job is to try to make sure as close as we possibly can we're getting the right dose of radiation inside the patient in the right place. Um, and we know it's important to, to deliver uh, very accurate uh, doses of radiation, um, uh, more and more so as, as we go forward, as we're delivering higher and higher doses to patients that have had you know, some previous radiation as well, it becomes more and more critical that that dose is accurate, and that's, that's effectively my job. We know that uh, radiotherapy cures or plays a part in curing 40% of all cancer patients, yet it only attracts about 5% of the whole uh, NHS cancer budget. Um, so it's, it's not particularly satisfactory, and if we, we're going to make headway compared with our European neighbours, uh, we, we need to get our government to understand that. There was a recent survey uh, regarding Sabre access in the United Kingdom, and in 2018 we were doing a lot better than 2012. Uh, so uh, Sabre centres were up from 23% to 59% in that six-year period. So big improvements, but there's still quite a lot of regional variation. So gating is in effect treating the tumour during only part of uh, the cycle, normally the respiratory cycle. So if we imagine our tumour moving up and down, our radiation beam is only, is only treating during the part of the cycle uh, which, is, which is the most stable, usually at end expiration. Uh, it's a relatively inefficient method of delivering radiation uh, and it can be error prone because you're relying on some assumptions from before. Um, synchronization, as, as Zachary, uh, the CyberKnife does it uh, at the moment, uh, it's, it's, a lot, it's a much better solution because it follows the tumour, it tracks that tumour trajectory in real time uh, according to some external marker and so it delivers the beam all of the time that the tumour is moving uh, and without those uh, assumptions uh, that other systems use. The synchrony system is, is very important for our patients. Uh, we see a lot of patients that have existing uh, lung disease on, as well as their cancer. And so asking them to do some active breath hold or something like this, or, or, or some uh, active breathing control where they're, where they're not in free breathe is usually quite difficult uh, for the patient. So allowing them to breathe freely, and we're not relying on any assumptions that they were doing in the, in the CT scan, uh, that's the real benefit of CyberKnife from my perspective. In terms of, as we, as we know, we, we, we use uh, gating uh, for conventionally fractionated uh, radiotherapy as well. But when we're talking about delivering stereotactic radiotherapy, um, in, the, in the lung cancer case, for example, we're delivering nine times the normal dose of radiation per day. So being, being sure of where that tumor is in space is, is way more important than in conventional radiotherapy. And also if we're tracking the tumor in real time, it means that we're, we're significantly reducing the amount of normal lung uh, that's, getting those, that's getting those very, very high doses in stereotactic radiotherapy. So the medical physics expert, as defined by the UK law, uh, has been in place for more than 18 years, and that law specifies that the medical physics expert must be closely involved in every radiotherapeutic procedure. And this is a safety thing. So we're trying to make sure uh, that uh, although we can't be at every fraction of every patient's delivery, we've set, we're setting up safe, robust, accurate systems uh, from right from the pretreatment planning right through to delivery, that, that whole patient pathway to make sure that that, uh, that radiotherapy is safe.